It is no secret that most people prefer socializing with others who share common thoughts, beliefs, religion, politics, and other commonalities. When people partake in activities with members who share the same opinions, philosophies, education, community, and language, they immediately begin to feel even spiritually connected. Over a short period of time, a type of brotherhood or sisterhood forms. Now, how can these perceived commonalities be used to control large groups of people, even to the point that ensures their mutual destruction? Welcome to Four C's One Family. The right to freely express opinions in democratic nations may unexpectedly become derailed and end up uniting those with related and sometimes radical views. Members of these groups may become evangelized and later begin propagating their beliefs or faith outside their spheres of influence. Being a member or part of a community or group can amplify or exaggerate an individual's optimistic and pessimistic sense of security and pride. Is it possible that the commonalities that hold these groups together, in democratic nations in particular, become influenced or abused remotely by nefarious institutions, foundations, and unsurprisingly, governments? Along with the chances of individuals remaining unnoticed, being part of a large group of people can raise the level of confusion and in some cases, and very extreme cases, panic. The need for members to amplify their voices may become an obsession. Now, suppose outside groups, institutions, or governments with nefarious motives become aware of this situation. In that case, they may try to infiltrate these groups and create disturbances that encourage them to criticize or attack other groups opposed to their positions or simply create an environment that leads to their implosions. You see, a mob creates a hiding place for people who aren't able or allowed to make known what they think or feel or for those who prefer to remain followers and hide behind others because they fear that their honest thoughts and opinions would make them outcasts. Keep in mind that the reason why a group of people has gathered becomes more important than the fact that they have assembled. Suppose the majority of people who have power see a group as a destructive contributor to society or their financial existence. In that case, they may most likely define the group negatively and express or look for or lobby for rules and regulations that limit or eliminate their activities and influence. On the other hand, a group described as not threatening social norms and the social financial existence of those in power, they may most likely be defined in favorable terms and even encouraged. <laughs> Keep in mind that mob members may feel empowered or invincible because of incubated beliefs in their concentrated groups. These sensations develop into self-serving biases and can be even more powerful than a hallucinogenic drug. As we all know, anything resembling these sensations can produce unpredictable and regrettable outcomes. Mob members' backgrounds are usually a reflection of the beliefs held in their groups, which usually includes ethnicity, religion, political affiliation, sexual orientation, and even similarities with other groups, and the definitions are endless. For example, and depending on the time, a group celebrating a tradition or historical event is described as a cultural gathering or even a parade. This group would be seen as peaceful and nonviolent and therefore not a threat to the general public. However, if the actions of a group of people gathered together loudly and violently ex expressing their opinions and disagreements, they may be defined as a mob. The truth is that mobs must share a similar mentality to remain organized and united. 
when a gathering of people is described as a mob. It refers to the group as prone to displaying violent behavior or a mob mentality. Mob mentality or herd mentality describes the characteristic of large groups of people who adopt and employ destructive methods to influence others and build or maintain power. These terms are often used as negative connotations because the term mob usually conjures up an image of aggression and chaos. But before we continue, Let's take a moment to remove the mask worn by those who excite others and take part in destructive mass mob events. Are those who make up the membership of socially created mobs honorable, or are they just people looking for emotional outlets for their frustration? I think at least a few of them are members of the latter. Negative definitions describe crowds of people displaying unpredictable, violent, and hysterical behaviors as mobs. However, based on several recent events, these definitions may be counterintuitive. Sudden or unscheduled occurrences perceived as disrespectful, harmful, or dangerous can cause people to react in unforeseen, self-destructive ways. The reactions of large groups of people being startled may result in an unexpected stampede, destruction of property, and in the end, trampling of people leading to fatalities. A massive group of people can't be easily managed or persuaded. However, we can't deny that the actions of large groups of people were the main reasons why political and social changes occurred in nations with governments that suppressed freedom of expression and violently resisted giving their citizens the right to question their policies and actions. Honestly, many of these mobs did produce mayhem, which led to the toppling of establishments, institutions, and governments that were denying them basic human rights. Nations with governments that are currently suppressing the rights and freedoms of their citizens know this. And they are working hard to support and amplify the negative aspects of mob mentalities in democratic nations because they see large groups of people fighting for their freedoms as an infectious disease and they rather not get infected. Before we define a mob mentality only in negative terms, we need to also look at how other mentalities affect other parts of our society. Cultural, social, and economic factors converge to create trends built on natural or manufactured situations and events, which can be used as both rational and irrational mob behavior or predictors. So the next time we see a mass of people gathering together, promoting things they feel are essential, step back and analyze the situation. Ask yourself why this event is occurring and whether or not your participation will make a positive difference because the underlying impetus may be the cause of this group's behavior and may not be the one perceived by each and every group member because they just may be remotely controlled. And the next question is why? If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.